Good day everyone, I'm back with another Blender tutorial series and as I promised in my last trailer video about this architectural rendering tutorial series, uh, this is actually the first video that, uh, it, that belongs to that tutorial series and this video is all about creating a living room in Blender 2.8 using EV render engine. Now as you guys have noticed this is actually an architectural or interior better to say interior render scenes and uh, this video as you can see is uh, pretty long and the reason of it being too long is that I have created everything from scratch everything of the object that you can see in the scene is created by me on scratch and I will be showing you guys exactly how I have created everything so basically i have uh, tried my best to explain everything to you guys so that you might find it helpful and if you guys like this video then give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel press on the notification bell so that you get uh, updated with everything that i will be publishing so without any much further ado let's jump into business now before doing all the crazy stuff it's always better to have a look on the internet to get some ideas and as this one is actually related to the living room so it's always better to have a look on the internet to get some ideas so in order to get the ideas you can either google it but I have a better alternative I actually search my reference images in Pinterest and by searching the living room I get millions and millions of results these are all beautiful images but the one that I have uh, selected for this tutorial will uh, must be a simple one so that it uh, it's easier to create so for this one I have selected this image as you can see it's actually pretty simple and it's a very good to begin with I will actually not uh, copy everything I will be getting some or taking some ideas from this image and I will create my own living room so having this one selected I will start with my modeling so here's in the blender I will go ahead and start with my project the first thing that I will be doing is uh, to delete this uh, default lamp and to hide my camera for time being so uh, by clicking this camera and by uh, clicking H I have actually hidden this one as you can see it's actually invisible now you can also toggle the uh, hiding and unhiding of an object by just uh, clicking on this little eye icon over here so for the time being I will be hiding my camera and I will be selecting the cube because this is actually my room so it's very very important to have your scene to be actually in the scale in the real world scale so in order to do that I will be actually going to uh, my properties panel by hitting N and here as you can see the dimension of this cube is actually 2 meter in both X Y and Z axis so actually I will be uh, scaling this one to be something like room so but before doing I always am accustomed to going to the edit mode by hitting tab and then pressing G and then hitting Z so locking my grabbing or movement to only through the z-axis and then hitting them pad one and then hitting enter so now what i have actually done if i'm scaling it up my the point of origin is always lying in the bottom of the mesh uh, one thing that i have forgotten to do is turn on my screencast key um, okay so now as i have done my uh, or set up my point of origin of the of the cube to be on in the bottom or at the center of the grid line now it's time to uh, put some dimensions or to set the dimension of this room so as you know i live in india we actually set this idea with uh, by feet or not by meters so it's not a problem at all because i can type the the length and breadth of the room in feet and automatically it will be updated in metric scale so i will be setting this one to be about like 29 or 25 feet so 25 ft will be applying the 25 feet and by hitting enter you can see that it's automatically updated with 7.62 meter and similarly i will be setting the y axis to be about uh, around 20 feet and it's automatically updated with the 6.1 meter and the height shall be around 13 feet so this is actually my room so the room is actually applied and now having done this i will be 
applying the location as well as the ro uh, rotation and scale of the room so that everything is actually now properly aligned and it's always a good habit to rename this one to rename every object so i will be renaming it as room yeah and yeah that's the room and i will now start with the actually modeling this room so going to the edit mode i will at first go to the ceilings to have that kind of crevices and uh, you know that platform or the ceiling or the false ceiling something like that so uh, i will be switching to the face selection selecting the top face i will hit i to insert a face and then i will just uh, just hover my mouse a little bit over like there where i think it's actually applicable to insert the face and then i will hit i again to have this insert face right about there and this time what i'll be doing is i will be making it something like a square shape so s and then x so by hitting s i will be scaling it up and down but i will be scaling it down by only x axis so i'll be hitting x and then i will just hover my mouse until i find something like a square shape and here it is now i can increase the scale if i want because i think that that was that was quite too small okay so so far so good and now i will be uh, selecting all these you know the face or the edge loops which has been created over here so the shortcut keys of selecting in this is by holding alt and then selecting on the on the uh, actually the intersecting point of these two faces and you can have let me just show you uh, you can have at one single click you can select the entire face loop which is interesting isn't it now okay so i will be extruding it up because there will be a false ceiling pattern something like this now let me just go ahead and uh, let us see from the inside of this room so you can unhide the camera go to zero to have this camera view activated and just by uh, holding control and then just pressing middle mouse button you can hover your mouse and once you are hovering it up you are inside the room now this is actually uh, i have enabled my you know over here you can see it i have enabled the what's the option yeah lock camera to view option so okay so having done this one this thing now it's time it's pretty important to have your cameras actually ready for this scene so holding control and then holding middle mouse button and then i am dragging it down so uh, once i'm dragging it down you can see that i am actually outside my cube this is a, one of the most important part of this video as you can see it in the in this one this preview image the entire scene is actually on the camera lens but over here we have a very little now you can actually increase the size of the room but it won't help you but what is actually the process of doing this is actually setting your camera's focal length now by default in 2.8 the focal length of the camera is set to be about 50 mm which is very good for a closer in shot but for the interior scene like this the best camera focal length is actually 19 millimeter to 23 millimeter you can also tweak this one to be about like 21 millimeter which is actually good one but still you can see that there's a lot of clipping going around because i cannot see this uh, the ceilings so what i will be doing is i will be selecting this one i will be selecting this face and then i will grab it onto the x-axis a little bit forward just to make it a room because you know uh, something like a passage or something like that and once you are right now over here you can see that it's now actually well it's actually getting into a proper view and something like that yeah and yeah that's it now it's time to redecorate the room now once how i have done that i will be saved i will be saving this one so let me just go to the desktop i have already selected this one living room tutorial i will be selecting this as new and i'll be saving this one okay having these things saved now it's time to remodel this 
ceiling so what I'll be doing over here right now I will be uh, introducing a loop cut right about there control B to introduce a bevel and then uh, having this beveled applied what I'll be doing alt E to extrude to uh, to activate the special extrusion option and I will be selecting this one extrude face along the normals what this will do is will actually you can see that it's actually extruding along with the normals so actually I will be extruding it inwards rather than outwards something like this yeah and uh, that's it so the ceiling is actually created pretty pretty cool okay so now it's time to create the window so what I'll be doing I'll be again going to the uh, face selection and I will be selecting this face and uh, instead of creating loop cuts I have come with the process of creating this one to be by just inserting a face and selecting the face to be like over there let me just uh, scale it a little bit further yeah something like that and let me just uh, just uh, move it a little bit downward by uh, hitting G and then Z a little bit downward and then by activating this you know edge selection selecting this uh, this bottom edge I'll be hitting G and then Z and just drag it upward a little bit where you want something to be like you know the window to be appeared so now by again selecting the face selection what I'll be doing is let me just uh, go outside hit E to extrude over here and then delete this face and let me just go ahead and have a look in the look uh, or the you know developer mode or the look developer mode and so far it's actually looking rather nice yeah so moving on with my modeling uh, let's now create that uh, column over here now in order to create the column I will be using the knife tool so switching to the edit mode uh, sorry edge edge mode and then hitting K I have activated my knife tool now just I will go ahead and select a cut right from here to right there and press enter so you can see that's uh, actually a cut which has been created again I'll repeat the process with another cut right about here and press enter so that's the two cut but it's actually not a straight line so there's no there's nothing to worry about you just have to go to the edge selection select this edge S to scale the planning is to scale it only on the Y uh, sorry X axis and it will straight things out so as you can see it's now a straight line similar thing will be done over here as well so S to scale and then X to make it uh, like this and uh, yeah let me just make it sure just make sure and this is a pretty helpful option this one just toggling this two, where this switch gives you an x-ray view of the entire model as you can see you can see through the the, uh, the faces and which comes very handy and once you are done with it you can just simply click it off so over here now I will be clicking it on and selecting these two edges what I'll be doing I'll be scaling it on the x-axis so as to create a little bit of a gap and then grab by hitting G and then hitting X I will be grabbing it to be somewhere around like there yeah that's actually the idea now having created this two edge what I'll be doing now is I will be beveling it up so in order to create some sort of a pillar like structure and then I will be extruding it outward a little bit some place like that and then I will be selecting this face this one and I will be extruding it outward a little bit now I will be just uh, disabling this one now selecting these two faces let me just select this two face I will be actually uh, let me just 
yeah I will be inserting or inserting face again right about there something like that yeah and I will be scaling it down on the Z axis so as to make it something like a like a shelf and then I will extrude it outward a little bit right about there uh, maybe maybe a little bit further yeah yeah that's it that's for the columns so pretty much uh, my room has been created or the walls the ceilings with everything the room has been created and let me just save this one at first so moving on to the other objects so now I will be creating a couch so let me just hide this one because it will be an easier workflow to do now for the couch I will be actually uh, introducing a cube and then again I will go with the same thing grab on the Z axis and hitting number, number pad 1 and then hitting enter let me just bring out my skin plus key once again so now it's my regular habit to have my origin point on the base of the mesh and I will scale it down on the Z axis a little bit over like this and scaling it down on the Y A axis to be something around like that uh, maybe it was too much yeah something like this and I will scale it up on the X axis to be somewhere like this so this is actually the base mesh of the couch now I will introduce a loop cut from over here and drag it all the way to something like there yeah somewhere like this and now I will go to the face selection okay before going to the face selection I will add another loop cut over here and I will bevel it out by hitting ctrl B and putting it over there so now what I'll be doing is uh, I will add another loop cut and this time I will be just deleting this one end over here like this one my boss selection because I will be applying a meter modifier so going to the modifier I'll add a meter modifier and I will enable clipping and I will also enable the meter modifiers to be uh, to be actually viewed on the edit mode as well so now that you can see I haven't lost any of my base mesh so now I will be going to the face selection select these two faces and hit E to extrude and extrude it upwards to be somewhere around like this having done these things what I'll be doing I will be introducing another loop cut right about there and one loop cut over here somewhere like this and then I will be actually selecting this one and I will bevel it out up somewhere around like this now having these things done I will go to the face selection select this face and hit E to extrude and extrude it outward actually my plan is to join these two faces together now you don't have to worry about if it's actually not uh, according to the scale because later on it can be easily done so I will just uh, move it over there and I will add another loop cut roughly around like this so that there will be uh, you know these two faces will be joined together I'm turning it off because I don't want my x-ray viewer right now so I will go to the face selection and now manually I will delete these two faces so now going to the S selection I will select these two edges and then hit F to actually insert a face and I will do the same thing right about there also so selecting these two faces F to join these two faces so F to join these two faces together and now F to join these two faces together so roughly now that my couch has been created now it's now time to uh, to create the cushions so for the cushions I will again go to uh, go ahead and add a cube scale it down on the z-axis to be somewhere around like this and then I will scale it down on the y-axis to be somewhere around like this now I will uh, bring it upwards so G and then Z to bring it up 
just uh, right about there somewhere like this and now I will bring it over like this over this area so now I will be scaling it down on the x-axis let me just go to the solid view over here because I need the solid view right now and I will be bringing it forward a little bit and scale it down on the z-axis a little bit as well and now shortcut key uh, a shortcut to apply or to activate two level of subdivision is control plus two so that's two level of subdivision is actually uh, actually activated what I'll be doing is I will be introducing two different loop cuts in every in every corner of the mesh right there also yeah so now that you can see that something which uh, resembles something like a cushion is actually created now let me just bring it down on the z-axis and uh, let me just increase the x-axis as well bring it right about there now it doesn't even matter if you are not actually uh, having a good uh, you know uniformity in the scalings because it can be later modified so now I'll be duplicating this one bring it on the x-axis to be somewhere around like this and look at that it's actually it's actually looking pretty nice isn't it so let me scale this one to the z-axis downward and bring it down like this and now I'll be duplicating the same object rotate along the x-axis to be about 90 degree and now scale it down on the z-axis and scale it down on the y-axis and then I will be bringing it right about there so now that uh, my couch has been pretty much completed something like stylized you know couch and it's not looking too bad one thing I can still do is uh, just go ahead and grab all these you know faces I can also grab this one and I will just move it forward a little bit so as to create a nice you know, narrowness in the, in the topology now for the as my modeling has been nearly completed so now what I'll be doing is I'll be applying this mirror modifier because I need this face to be working with now I'll be selecting this edge and I will dissolve the edges because I need this face to be a single one so now I will be inserting a face uh, right about there and extrude it downward a little bit and here you go I have created my I have created my couch one thing is to be needed none of this uh, you know the the angles or the corners of this mesh should be 100% sharp so I will be selecting all these you know edge edges and I will add bevel to them so as to create a nice smooth topology going all around the mesh so right about there one more thing to do apart from this one is to UV unwrap them but that can be done later on still a little bit of you know it's actually um, it's not that too much too hard to create things like this you can do anything you can achieve any kind of result by doing this type of box modeling it's a very good habit to have this kind of modeling things going on because it has actually helped me a lot you can, uh, you can also try it just go to the reference image and just apply this one okay so look at that it's actually created nice now if you haven't noticed what I did actually after selecting all these uh, you know let me select some more there are left here yeah. after selecting all these corners or the edges I actually hit ctrl B to activate bevel on my meshes and just hovering my mouse a little bit and then just right uh, left clicking this one to activate the bevel structure all over my mesh and uh, this is looking rather nice so I'll be saving my project and now let me just unhide the, my room 
and now it's time to actually place this place this couch so i'll be going to the wireframe mode uh, let me just join this together and i will be parenting them to this one so if i'm moving this couch you know the cushions is already is automatically moving so i'll be pushing it up a little bit over um, you know and i'll be pushing it a little bit back backward let me just go ahead and check out whether it's actually looking rather nice or not and guess what it's actually looking pretty good yeah it's pretty good so moving on to making the uh, the countertop table now for the countertop table what i'll be doing is i will again hide everything including the room as well as the couch so now let's get moving with the modeling the countertop table so what i'll be doing i will again uh, create a cube then do the same process again by uh, selecting the point of origin to the base of the mesh now i'll be scaling it down on the z-axis because this will be the base of my table uh, somewhere around like this so i'll quickly rename it as base and then what i'll be doing is i will duplicate this one shift d to duplicate this one and then grab it along the z-axis a little bit upward and now i'll scale it down on the z-axis because this will be the glass object or the glass top of the of the table to be around like this so i'll be renaming it as glass top and having done this this is actually the the base or the or the structure of the table that i'll be actually creating and now i will uh, grab on the base and go into the edit mode i will select this uh, this face down below i'll hit i to insert a face to be somewhere around like this hit e to extrude extrude it downward a little bit so that uh, the base of the mesh is actually created and now selecting everything by hitting a and then control b to act activate some little bevel on my mesh and the same thing will be done over on the glass as well so control b a very little bevel is actually needed okay so having done this now what i'll be doing i will be adding four different legs which will be nothing else but uh, a cylinder so add a mesh which will be a cylinder and then i will be uh, as you can see the vertices is 8 which is pretty much what I need now I'll be scaling it down on the X as well as Y axis so holding shift Z will lock the scaling on the Z axis intact and then it can scale on the X and Y axis so leaving the Z axis intact so something like this I will a little bit of a scaling down is needed actually okay so having done this now it's time to uh, actually scale it down on the z-axis okay on the z-axis what i'll be doing is i will be scaling it and then hit z to lock the scaling on the z-axis only and i will scale it down to be something around like this and then hit g and then hit z to move this cylinder upward and uh, yeah something like this and then i will scale it down on the z-axis to match ac the actual you know the the length of the, of the to match the gap between these two objects so having done these things what i will be doing is uh, let me just uh, turn on this x-ray mode now i will go to the edit mode and make sure everything is selected I will grab it on the x-axis to be somewhere around like this and then grab it on the y-axis and move it over like this so what I actually did is I moved my object in the edit mode which actually left the point of origin on the center of this mesh now what I'll be doing is I'll be applying a modifier which will be a mirror modifier 
and you can see that it's actually being scaling according to the you know the point of origin right over there and i will be applying the mirror modifier on both the x as well as the y axis so as to make uh, a little bit you can see that it's actually created some sort of beautiful uh, legs uh, yeah so what i'll be doing right now is i will be adding a loop cut over here and control b to bevel it up somewhere around like this so if i am actually applying a two level of subserve modifier you can see that it's actually not hampering the object a little bit of a movement in the z-axis is actually needed so i will be moving it along the z-axis as well so now having done this i will be applying the middle modifier but i will leave this uh, you know the sub sub modifier intact so i'll be selecting the shade smooth options for everyone so let me set this one and uh, let me just rename this as the legs sorry uh, yeah legs and we are done with our countertop table i will select these two objects by holding down shift and then i will select this object by holding down shift as well control p to set this parenting object to the best one so if i'm moving it up or down you can see that every other object is actually following so that's the plan so what I'll be doing is I will be grabbing it up on the z-axis a little bit to make sure that it's actually touching the ground and now I'll be unhide everything and I will be looking at my scenes which is actually looking rather nice a little bit of uh, you know scaling down of this table is actually needed and here here we go it's actually looking fitting to the same a little bit of a scaling is actually needed as well okay so we are done with our countertop table as well as the couch now it's time to create some other decorative objects so let's now create our cabinet here now before creating this cabinet i will be hiding everything so h to hide and now i will start with a with a cube and uh, again setting the origin point on the base of the mesh by hitting g and then z and then add one and i will scale it down on the z-axis to be somewhere like this and i will also scale it down on the y-axis so that's my base mesh uh, maybe a little bit of uh, increase in the scale in y-axis is needed and yeah like that so now having my base mesh created let me go to the edit mode to add to make this cube look like something like a shelf uh, or a shelved you know cabinet so i'll at first introduce a loop cut by hitting ctrl r and bevel it up a little bit by control by hitting ctrl b and let me just put it right about there so having done this since what i'll be doing is i will again you introduce a loop cut right about there because the purpose of doing this is to delete one half of the mesh and leave the other half intact and then i will be applying the mirror modifiers on on this uh, you know the mesh so i'll box select until this edge you know edge loops and then i will go ahead and delete the vertices so now as the as the 50 percent of the mesh is actually deleted now it's time to add a mirror modifier for this uh, for this cabinet and uh, I will be selecting this clip clipping option and, uh, and I will also enable the mirror modifiers to be visible in the edit mode now having done this things what I'll be doing now is to uh, select this you know this face and I will hit I to insert a face right about there then I will scale it down on the z-axis to to just match some sort of a face creation and then i will hit e to extrude and i will extrude it inward right about there something like this now having done this thing what i'll be doing is i will be uh, introducing one face or one shelf right in this area so what i will be doing i can be easily create a loop cut right about there then I will bevel it up a little bit and then what I'll be doing is I will be selecting these 
three faces and I will delete those faces. Now I will switch back to the you know S selection, select all these three on the top you know the edges and then I will hit F to insert a face and I will also do the same thing right about there on the bottom of this you know the cabinet and hit F to create a face as well over there now before creating this face what I will be doing is I will be creating a face right in there so I'll be selecting these two face uh, these two edges and hit F to create a face and then I will select these two edges and create a face as well so now as you can see that uh, shelf is actually created now I will be uh, doing some sort of a uh, you know editing right uh, going on this area so I'll be at first applying the mirror modifier now I will be selecting these uh, uh, let me just go to the x-ray vision mode and I will be selecting these two these all, all these faces right like this way maybe this one as well and maybe this one as well yeah having done this what I will be doing is I will be hitting G and Z to move this a little bit downward so as to create a little bit of you know the differences in between all these shelves so that's it that's my you know the table which has been created now i will also be introducing uh, the base of this uh, you know table so i'll again de dissolve all these three edges by hitting delete and then i will dissolve these edges go to the face selection select this face hit I to insert a face and then E to extrude a little bit downward and here we go with our cabinet now I will be going to the edge selection to create a bevel you know the bevel structure all over all over the corners of this mesh uh, right about there Maybe a little bit of a bevel is made over here as well, over here as well, as well as here, and of course in the you know, in the base and this one as well. Okay, so having done these things, I'll hit Control B and just slide my mouse a little bit to create a little bit of a smooth you know smooth edge flow over there so i'll be quickly renaming this to be my uh, cabinet or shelves if whatever you want to rename this and now it's time to place this cabinet just uh, in the sea so alt h to unhide everything and now it's time to position this one into its actual place so one thing i can see that it's actually rotate uh, it's actually in a in a wrong way of rotation so i'll be rotating it on the z-axis to be about 180 degree sorry about that 180 degree and i will be sending it upward a little bit so as to uh, so that it just touches the base of my flow now I will be grab uh, hit G to grab and then hit Y to you know lock the movement into the Y axis only and I will drag it a little bit behind and it's now time to manually position this one this cabinet according to the scene uh, a little bit over there and a little bit in the X axis maybe a little bit more right in there okay cool so another thing that I found out that it's actually too wide in according to the y-axis so I'll scale it down with the y-axis a little bit maybe something like that and I will just send it back on the y-axis so, so just it touches the 
wall over there okay pretty cool until now and it's now time to create the television set so again i will be going let me just uh, go to uh, let me just select this room and then go into the edit mode and selecting the face selection i will select this face and hit shift s to to turn out the selection menu and over here i will be selecting cursor to select it which will automatically snap my 3d cursor to the median point of this face so i will just go back to the object mode and hit shift a to add to add in a plane and then rotate it on the x-axis to be about 90 degree so yeah that's it uh, let me just and i will scale it down on the z-axis because television screen doesn't uh, don't actually appear 100 percent you know square they are rectangular in shape and i will scale it up a little bit and then what i'll be doing is uh, let me just scale it up a little bit as well and i will grab it on the z-axis and bring it a little bit upward so now until now it's actually uh, just uh, just touching this this wall so i'll go to the edit mode and by selecting this face as you can see it's already selected i'll hit e to extrude and extrude it outward a little bit some place like like there yeah yeah a little bit and then i will hit i to insert a face and I will insert a face to be around like this and then hit E to extrude extrude it downward a little bit and, you know backward a little bit and yeah that's it that's my you know TV and I will also add some sort of a bevel on this uh, TV as well Control B to add a little bit of a bevel and here we go we have created our television so i will be renaming it as tv and let me just save this one now let's quickly add some flower vase so now for the flower vase i will be using a circle you know the circle will be of uh, 16 vertices and uh, the fill type will be triangle fan now let's uh, jump into the edit mode because i will do the editing straight away and let's uh, go to the let's uh, enable this x-ray vision mode and i will scale it down somewhere like this one now it's actually not positioned correctly but uh, it can be done later on so yeah like this so now what i'll be doing i'll be it's uh, pretty much simple just extruding it out uh, upward and then scaling it down and then again extruding it up and then again extruding it up like this way uh, onto the desired spot you know the whole point of creating this uh, this vase is actually to create some sort of a you know round shape like this one It doesn't even matter if your shape is actually not fully round so yeah like this one i'm pretty much satisfied with this result so i'll go quickly just delete this vertex and guess what the flower vase is actually now created now, now the vase is actually uh, looking too much thick for the room so i will scale it down on the x as well as the y axis by holding down shift z and i will make it a little bit thin now as i made this thin one thing that i have noticed is that the base of this one is also actually affecting the you know is also affecting this uh, topology so i will quickly select this vertex and control plus to select the other vertex loops so now i'll be scaling it onto the x as well as the y axis so 
holding down shift z i am now just scaling it out a little bit like this so now i will be hitting i'll be adding two different modifiers the first modifier will be the solidify modifier so in order to give some sort of a you know solidification or some sort of a weight in its thickness until like this one yeah so satisfied and then i'll hit ctrl 2 to add a uh, sub sub modifier and i will select smooth shading for this one so let me just have a look on this face and it's actually looking rather nice so let me just scale it up on the z axis as well a little bit Yeah, something like this and yeah that's it and i will be bringing it forward a little bit so as it will be actually be caught in the camera and i will be duplicating this one and bring it over there as well so duplicating this one quickly press g and then x and i will position the other one to be this now like this one and let me just rename those two different circle first one will be vase one and this one shall be vase two so now that the face is created uh, has been created let me just uh, hide everything other than this face because i will be creating the plants over here so shift H will hide everything but the base. So over here I will be again turning on my X revision mode and uh, just selecting this one. I'm going to the edit mode. I'll just uh, select you know something like this one. This H loops and hit shift S to activate cursor to select it. So the cursor is actually selected into the you know the the midpoint of that edge loops now what i'll be doing is i will be adding some you know a single vertex so shift a mesh add a mesh that will be a single vertex add a single vertex and already it's in the edit mode so i'll select a, uh, i'll uh, switch to the vertex selection and then hit e to extrude and I will be extruding it down like this and then what I'll be doing is E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude a very much random like structure something like this and yeah I will just follow this order everywhere randomly I will just create some you know random vertices Yeah, something like that and what I'll be doing I have now just have been creating uh, created this uh, vertex or you know the edges by creating this random vertices I will be adding a skin modifier over here so I'll be selecting this uh, you know this one and I will just uh, select mark root and uh, shift a so control a will actually create you know decrease the uh, scale so i'll be going to the proportional editing by hitting o and then shift a and i will just decrease all these uh, what is this uh, the scale of this skin something like this maybe just grab this one and over here as well the point of doing this to create some sort of uh, something like a branch which uh, where I will be adding some leaves so as to you know create some sort of something like plant a miniature plant just selecting this one as well 
shift a the one thing that you may have noticed that when i'm in the proportional editing mode i just have to worry about a single vertex and automatically you know the the other vertex which actually is coming under the radius of this proportional editing will be scaled accordingly so now let me just increase this uh, the value of this the base of this plant like this okay so having done these things what i'll be doing actually is there is a little bit of a weird thing happening so let me just grab this and make things a little bit uh, you know more realistic so i will be actually introducing a subdivision right about there just grab this and create something like that something like bent bent branches now i'll be introducing two level of sub 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 modifiers so as to create this you know smoothed uh you know topology and look at that it's actually starting to you know looking rather nice let me just scale it down a little bit as well something like this you can even use some other extrusion in the if you want branches and yeah something like that and maybe just i will be introducing another subdivision over here so you know to create some sort of a, you know paint bending option uh, you know bending like structure in this part so let me just scale it up a little bit and yeah that's it and I will be duplicating this one and rotating it along the Z axis and I will be grabbing and just bring it a little bit you know, like that and yeah that's it that's the bra you know the plan that I was talking about so let me just uh, quickly rename these as branches I will at first uh, actually join them together to get to join them together and now what I'll be doing is I will be applying this skin modifier so as to make it you know something which is looking like a vertex oh, sorry mesh now I will be going to the wet paint options or you can actually create you know the vertex paint i will be going to the wet paint options over here and i will quickly you know create something like uh, a little bit of a weight in, in the branches what i actually did over here is after going to the wet paint option you can manually paint this weight over there red means uh, it will be 100 percent uh, the weight will be 100% over there and blue means there is no weight uh, so if you are actually uh, ins uh, inserting some sort of a particles in it uh, the blue la the blue the area with the blue color won't be affected with those particles and the red will be having 100% effect on the particles now you can actually manually create this kind of you know paintings and which will be very very much tedious task so what I actually do there's a little bit of a shortcut over there you just have to go ahead and select anyone hit alt and then just click uh, just drag your mouse by holding down the left click and automatically you will be putting on weight onto all those you know the branches or all those meshes having normals on the same you know the edge values so you can see it's actually working pretty nice and sometimes it saves you a lot of you know time and energy to create this kind of a weight and i think the weight is the weight has been put together nicely so i will be you know quickly go ahead and uh, 
you can see it over there it's actually created as a group so this is actually the group uh, the weight I will be renaming it as weight because it will be you know better to rename this like this uh, like that one which will be actually symbolical to the purpose that you are putting on the weight on so I'll be renaming this as branches because you know it's better to rename them let me just save them my project and now it's time to create a leaf now the leaf will be a very simple object uh, I will be creating you know a very base sh basic shape and I will be applying a texture a leaf texture that and I will be applying uh, the texture onto that mesh which will be acting like uh, leaf so I will be just creating a plane let me go to the top view go to the edit mode and then quickly introduce a loop cut and a loop cut right above there as well so I'll be selecting this uh, you know this vertices and delete them and now I'll be applying a mirror modifier go uh, go ahead and uh, you know enable the clipping options and enable the you know the modifiers in the edit mode now I'll be selecting this vertex yeah this vertex grab it and join it like this and then what I'll be doing is I'll be grab these vertices as well grab them and create something like this edit and like this it doesn't even matter because actually it will be a very miniature object so you don't have to worry about it the one thing I can also create I will be creating a loop cut over there and by selecting these two loop cuts as well as this one I'll just uh, grab it down a little bit on the z-axis and selecting this one grab it on the z-axis and you know, just move it like this one just like you know a uh, normal leaf does yeah and to create some say something like the you know curved one now a very very important thing is now to apply two level of subdivision modifier so it's actually looking something like a leaf which is a good news for us now a very important thing to do is to set the point of origin of this mesh to be always at the base of this one because uh, the particles that will be emitted from our object will be emitted right from this area not from the center so what I'll be doing I'll be going to the edit mode select every vertices hit G uh, let me just turn off my proportional editing hit G and then by selecting Y I'll just put it right about there you know and from the top uh, side view I will just put it right in here so now it's now if I'm rotating it out if you can see that it's being rotating it's actually rotating according to the base of this mesh so I will just quickly rename this as leaf and that's it so what I will be doing now I will go ahead and introduce a particles you know particle effect on this one on these branches so adding a new particle settings I will be instead of emitter I will be selecting here and for the hair what I'll be instead of using a thousand number I will be selecting 50 in order to you know decreasing this one and I'll be clicking on advance in order to have some uh, some more you know power uh, while editing this this particle systems now for at uh, now for he over here down in the renders tab I will be rendering it as not this path but I'll be selecting an object 
and our duplicate object or the instance object over here will be our leaf so now you can see that it's actually uh, the 50 leaves are actually implemented in on the branches but in a wrong way let me just apply the rotation and scale over here now having done this things what i will do uh, i want uh, these leaves to be actually uh, implemented on these branches so what i'll be doing over there there is a settings called the vertex group uh, for the density i'll be selecting the weight now everything is now over you know on these branches another thing is uh, all these leaves are actually pretty big so over there i will be decreasing the you know the scale of this leaf to be something like this one which is actually point 0.015 which is actually looking good and the scale of randomness will be increased as well so everything is now let me just increase this one a little bit they are all random in you know their shapes and now another thing is to be done over here i will also be you know enabling rotation so it will give me some more some more actually power to edit this one so for this one the rotation i will be selecting the you know the velocity and here instead of velocity of or here i'll be actually selecting global y and uh, you know randomize them a little bit something like this which is actually looking rather nice and i will be randoming this face a little bit okay so yeah that's it that's the particle effects which is actually looking i think it will be looking rather nice so let me just unhide everything Now one thing you can be uh, thinking that uh, now what about some sort of a randomness over here now it won't be actually moving too much because all of these objects will be stagnant so I don't have to worry about you know animating all these things because it's actually a still you know videography of uh, this entire scene so I won't be actually uh, thinking a lot about you know the leaves the one thing I will be doing you know the imager is right over there I will just drag this leaf and uh, you know drag it out of my camera's way so that my camera won't see it and now what I'll be doing I'll be selecting this branch and duplicating them I will grab it on the X axis and I will just put it on this vas as well and I will just randomize its uh, you know rotation and for this one you know the branches uh, let me just see yeah it's named. And for this uh, you know the particles everything is actually looking the same but over here I will be selecting on this little two button number two button so it's actually has given me some independence to create or to actually tweak the settings of this particle effect over here without affecting the particle settings of this or the actual mesh so right here as you can see it's actually been renamed particle settings 001 now for this one i will be selecting the number to be about around 75 so as to give me a little more dense you know leaves and the here length i can decrease this one sorry uh, i can also decrease the size of the of these leaves to be about uh, randomized like 0.25 will be sufficient and yeah that's it that's for the leaves and the flower base 
Okay, so moving on with the rest of the decorations uh, of this room. Now, what I'll be doing is I will be adding some photo frames over here. So let me just uh, grab my house uh, in the room at first. Go to the edit mode, and while going to the uh, face selection, I will be selecting this one, this face, and snap my cursor to the selections. Okay, so going back to the object mode. Shift A, adding a mesh which shall be a plane. Let me rotate that uh, to the x axis by 90 degree. And now you can see it's totally square. So I will be scaling on the x axis a little bit down so as to make it uh, more like rectangular in shape. And I will scale it down over like this one, something like that. And now I'll go to the edit mode with the face selection selected on already. I will just now hit E to extrude and extrude it a little bit outward like this and now what I'll be doing I'll be in setting a face by hitting I and I will be selecting something like this you know inset the faces okay so now what I'll be doing is I will be creating some sort of you know uh, yeah, extruded or protruded wooden frame over there so grab and grab by the y axis a little bit and grab it outward a little bit it's just very slightly and then again i will hit i to insert faces then over here i will drag my mouse over my mouse over somewhere place like this and then i will grab it to the y axis and grab it you know grab it backward a little bit yeah that's it that's a wooden frame and over here my i will apply some image texture so this will be the image and the rest of the part will be the you know the wood wooden frame so now what i'll be doing is uh, i will be so, uh, by selecting this face i will duplicate this one and bring it you know bring it forward a little bit just like about here and what I will be doing now just, uh, I will extrude this face a little bit backward because this will be actually acted as a glass plane so control plus uh, control and number, number pad plus will actually select this face or this um, you know the part of the mesh and I will hit P to separate this as a selection so now that uh, these two are totally two different objects this one I will be renaming it as uh, you know photo frame and uh, this one I will be renaming it as glass so glass frame or let to rename it as frame glass because I've already used the term glass for this, you know, countertop table. Okay, having done this, I will just uh, bring it, uh, you know, backward to the y axis a little bit. And now I will just scale it up a little bit so as to, you know, match the wooden frame with it. Maybe a little bit backward. And yeah, that's it. So, I will be parenting this to the wooden frame. So, control P to set parent to the object. Now, if I am moving this wooden frame, automatically my glass will be moved as well. So, okay. So, as I have finished with my, you know, the photo frame, I will be positioning this to be somewhere around like there. Just bring it down a little bit, and I will be duplicating these two, you know, object uh, three times, and I will be scaling it down a little bit so as to create. Uh, let me just scale it up a little bit, something like this, and I will again duplicate it and bring it right about there. So these are the three photo frames that will be used for this scene. Uh, yes, yeah. and 
yeah the photo frames have been now created and on this countertop table i will be actually using this uh, the same you know the plants i will be not uh, uh, creating some different plants for this uh, for the sake of the tutorial because it will otherwise it will get you know way too longer so i know that you will be bored so i will just quickly duplicate this one scale it down a little bit and uh, by selecting this top face i will snap my cursor to select it and let me just uh, grab this one so this one as well as this one shift s selection to cursor and yeah something like this now one thing that i found out that uh, although i have scaled it down but uh, these plants are actually uh, you know way too big this is because this uh, this particles is actually taking the data all from this one so i will again uh, click on this one this little uh, two button and uh, it will make it an independent an independent you know particle settings now over here what i'll be doing i'll be scaling it down way to you know low for this one and uh, let me just grab this grab the branch where are you here yeah. and i will you know, send it upward and let me just yeah bring it right about there and maybe sending it down a little bit so yeah that's it maybe a little bit of uh, yeah that's that's the settings let me just scale it onto the z-axis some place like this and now it's time to you know place the vase or the vase uh, onto its desired position so selecting this one just bring it down until it uh, it actually matches or it actually just touches the surface of the of the glass you know of the glass of this countertop table yeah that's it and i will now bring it uh, some place like this and now i will be adding a plane scale it down a little bit scale it onto the y-axis up a little bit and you know extrude it a very a very slight so just extrude it on the z-axis very slightly just to make it something like a paper and yeah this is it i will be renaming this as the paper let me save this one so enough with the decorations uh, i can also decorate some other things like over here you know the design ideas uh, but uh, it will make this uh, video even longer so i know that you will uh, you people will, will get bored the one thing that i have seen that's uh, this couch needs a little bit of a modifications so i will bring it uh, sorry let me just grab only these two areas grab them on the x axis and to match you know the the couch of the downward or lower couch as well so quickly i have created some decorative ideas for this you know the scene and already the scene is looking better than it was before and now for the ceiling light which will be actually applied over there uh, let me just grab this part of the ceiling and i will hit shift s to select the cursor over there and now it's time to create that you know that pendant or the ceiling lights so i'll add a mesh which will be a circle with uh, you know the triangle fan uh, activated and the vertices shall be around eight because i don't want a huge mesh which will be actually hidden over there and i will scale it down somewhere like this e to extrude the shape right to there and then again e i will be you know and then again e 
so the actually the purpose of uh, extruding this three times because uh, when I will be applying a subsurf modifier over there I don't want the you know the mesh to be deformed with uh, with the subsurf mod modifier applied so this is actually the base of the ceiling lights now having done this thing I let me just apply two level of subdivisions uh, subsurf modifier and it's actually uh, starting to give me a good result okay so now what I'll be doing I will be adding three different you know uh, cylinder over there. so I will be selecting this area uh, select cursor to select it it's better to have a curve uh, applied in there and the curve shall be a path and I will be uh, rotating on the y-axis to about 90 degrees and while going to the edit mode and select this area and select my cursor to select it you know and I will I will select the origin of this one to be at the 3D cursor and I will go to this curve options and uh, give it a little bit of a geometry for this one so the uh, beveling depth I will be giving a slight bevel or depth for this uh, curve which is good enough for this uh, you know the ceiling lights and I will what I'll be doing now I'll be duplicating this very curve or uh, around these four different you know, this area and then for this area and then this area so let's make it you know four different strands of holes coming or protruding down from uh, the space of this mesh shift s press it to select it duplicate this one and then shift s selection to cursor and again i will repeat this process so now just with one modeling i have uh, created four different instances of same curve so now what i'll be doing i will be selecting all these four uh, poles and i will join them together now going to the edit mode, I will select each and every one of them, hit uh, with my proportional editing mode on, I will scale them down, you know, something like this, until they are joined together. And I will now add a piece of curve, a uh, unit you know, scale it down, bring it down to be this portion and I will again give it a little bit of a depth yeah, like this one uh, what I'll be doing over here is I will be adding an array modifier for this uh, you know this curve so an array modifier will be good enough now instead of using it on the x-axis I will be actually using it minus so yeah it will be something like one maybe two so as to create a little bit of a gap between them 1.5 yeah 1.5 is good enough and I will you know repeat this process a couple of times like yeah seven counts is actually good and let me just scale it down a little bit and uh, send it out upward and uh, so far so good it's actually looking you know better yeah something like that and now having done this since i will manually select each and every you know this uh, vertices hit e to extrude and then s to scale and i will just make them join together so as to create a little bit of you know uh, something which is acting like these are supporting this uh, this area so yeah that's it that's for the ceiling lights now i will be adding some more ceiling lights over there so with my cursor now selected on this area i will now again uh, let me just duplicate this uh, this circle grab it 
and send it over the Z, uh, Y axis a little bit. Let's scale it down a little bit. So I'll select this one uh, and Control Plus to select the entire, you know, the edge loops over there. I will insert a face right about there, and then I will hit E to extrude it downward a little bit and scale it, scale it up a little bit. And then again hit E to extrude and scale it down to be somewhere like this. Now one thing you may have noticed that uh, it's actually looking, although it's looking good enough from this angle, yet there mm, must be some sort of a crevice yeah, to be present over there. So I will select this entire edge loop and select Ctrl B to add a bevel to there. So now we have got a better uh, view of this. So that's a, that will be our false ceiling, you know, the ceiling lights which will be applied over there. So let me just select this face and snap my cursor to select it and automatically it will be selected around over there. And by selecting this one, I will quickly rename it as a ceiling light, you know. I will hit shift S and select selection to person. We have a proper view of this one, but according to me, this one is actually too too small, so I will scale it up a little bit. And yeah, let me, maybe a little bit more. And now it's time to you know place the ceiling light in its proper position somewhere like this and I will be applying rotation and scale to this one because I will be now and uh, a location as well so now it's time to add a add an array modifier at first so this array modifier I will be applying uh, literally about 8 so there will be let me just give it a 10 so there is a here you know proper distance and i will count this one to be around four to you know maybe even one more so five counts or five different ceiling lights will be actually applied and another modifier which will be a mirror modifier so automatically everything will get you know mirrored over there let me just put it back upward so now one thing that i found out that the mirror modifier when applied is actually not showing up on this wall it's because i need to you know apply the location as well as the rotation and scale to them and let me see where where is my mirror modifier right now uh, how is how is this interacting it's not interacting way too good just, yeah over there and it's now working properly the problem was that it was actually applied on the x-axis and I have to deactivate the x-axis and activate the uh, mirror to be applied on the y-axis so moving on to the part where I will be creating the curtains and uh, the other you know the tweakings regarding the modeling so without wasting any more time let us create the curtain so before creating the curtain i will be you know going to the edge from, uh, sorry to the edit mode and selecting this face i will at first uh, select cursor to select it while because it will be an ease to model this now what i'll be doing let me turn my speed key on now i will be adding a cylinder with you know triangle fan activated and I will be selecting eight vertices and then I will be uh, rotating onto the x-axis by 90 degree and I will be scaling by leaving the y-axis so as to create you know some sort of a some sort of a pole or 
or the, yeah the pole or the pinnings where the curtains will be actually provided so I'll be scaling down on the X and Y axis sorry X and the Z axis leaving Y axis intact so that's it I will be now bringing it a forward a little bit by hitting G and then pressing X I'll be just bringing it a little bit forward and I will just bring it a little bit down yeah until like this this one I'll be scaling it on the Y axis until right about there maybe a little bit more yeah until there so now it's time to add some plane so I'll be adding a plane rotate it on the Y axis to be about 90 degree and, uh, and then what I'll be doing going to the edit mode I'll go to G, I'll hit G then Z minus 1 so now that uh, the point of origin is actually on the top of this mesh so I'll be just bringing it down a little bit and similar thing I will be bringing it forward until it's actually you know it is matching with the with the pole now what I'll be doing I'll be scaling it up a little bit uh, scale it down on the y-axis a little bit and I will be bringing it right about there okay, so moving on with my modeling of this curtain let me just uh, grab it right about there the one thing that I've noticed that it's actually not perfectly in shape uh, it's not actually a square so what I'll be doing I'll make it a little bit of square shape so adding a um, you know a loop cut can divide them into two different two different squares so I'll be now uh, selecting everything by uh, hitting A and then now it's time to subdivide them a couple of times maybe maybe five will be good enough yeah and then I will again do the same sort of subdivision a little bit so having done these things what I will be doing now is uh, I will be selecting every other you know edges so holding down shift and then holding alt left clicking to every edges next to next to the one I have selected this edge and now I will bring them a little bit forward by by pressing G and then pressing X so as to make it a little bit you know zigzag or a curved like structure something like that now I will be selecting every one of them hitting E to extrude and then selecting X I can now just make it a little bit you know thick because no curtain is as like a paper there are some uh, there are some sort of a you know thickness going around them so you I can see that it's now not perfectly aligned with the seam so uh, hitting G and then I will move it on the x-axis a little bit backward and now what I'll be doing is I will be applying two level of subsurf modifier and I will select smooth shading for this one now as you can see it's actually uh, pretty much round round like shape it's having so I'll be selecting these edges again and this time I will be adding a bevel to them so as to create you know some sort of a bevel like structure like this now you can also uh, and now I will be creating a little bit of a you know the ununiformity in the scales so turning my proportional editing on and selecting this edge flow I can now scale it down and uh, just increase the uh, scale it down on the y-axis something like you know, like this so as to create a little bit of a ununiformity in the edges so I'll be now duplicating this one bring it right about there and uh, you can also do some sort of a you know, editing in the base let me just introduce a little bit of a bevel and I will be scaling it on the y axis a little bit and there it is so in this part I will be applying the texture and materials uh, on the objects and then I will see whether how the scene is actually interacting I will at first uh, apply the texture to this room and for the room I will be actually applying a very useful add-on for applying materials and textures that comes uh, along with blender 2.8 package and that is 
blender kit at all which can be found by hitting n and uh, bringing out the properties panel you can find it over there and there you can see that there are lots of textures as well as materials present in the in the blender kit at all not only the materials you can also find several brushes as well as uh, you know uh, acid bar is also there but uh, i will be actually uh, putting stress on applying the materials so let me just go ahead and uh, select this shading option and once in the shading option uh, once in the shading you know window i will go ahead and apply a plaster material to the walls of this room so i can go on to this plaster and in the plaster panel you can see that there are lots of texture present in this in this material library there are at, uh, there are altogether 26 plaster materials but for this one i will be actually using this one plaster white and once clicked you can see that the material is actually loaded and the node setup is also present there automatically you don't have to do anything uh, regarding the bump map as well as the roughness everything can be done using this software which is very handy you can see that there is a lot of roughness going around there so yeah that's my class material and now i will be applying another material in this wall in this particular wall which shall be let me just hide this one at first uh, which shall be a brick pattern and i will be applying another material for these columns so actually i'll be using two uh, three different actually materials so i'll click on this plus button and select new for this one and then i will go to the edit mode and in the face selection mode i will select this face and select this material and hit assign so that now it has a new material has been ascribed only to this portion of the wall so for this one i will be actually using bricks and uh, once the bricks is loaded you can grab any of them but for this one i will be using this red brick wall version 2 and just a single click and you can see that the wall is or the image is actually applied very cool let me save this project and then again i will actually click on a new material yeah i'm in the object mode new material and for this one i will be actually applying all this let me just hide this one all these you know these faces on uh, this wall or these columns so i'll go to this x-ray vision mode uh, which enables to select the faces with the box selection i will just simply select these face these faces and then this one as well okay so now i have as i have clicked or selected all these uh you know this perspection of another this one is also needed yeah so now i will be assigning this material to material 001 to these two columns and for this one i will also be using another plaster so for the plaster of this ones i will be using uh, something like this one plus white yeah plus white but i will be actually changing the color node uh, or the input color so instead of white i'll be selecting something like a red red color and turn down the intensity to be around like this one so very very easily i have created a material to the to the room which is very cool stuff and you can see the how useful is this add-on right now so moving on to the couch now i will be applying wooden texture to this one but before doing this one i need a little bit of a uv editing for the you know for the couch so shift h will hide everything other than the uh, other than the couch so now i will have to you know use some sort of a uv uh, uv layout or masking the uvs so you can easily select everything and then hit u to unwrap it uh, since it's already been unwrapped but uh, i can see that the unwrapping is actually not according to the scale so what i will be doing right now 
is uh, either I can use smart UV project which will create some sort of a UV you know thing like this island like this uh, otherwise you can also use some other options but for this one I will be using uh, I'll be creating seams and then I will be uh, you know using uh, to all those seams to UV unwrap them so going to the S selection I will use a seam right there all these internal spaces and Control E and then I will create a mark seam so a seam has been created now and, and again I will select this edge as well as this edge this edge this edge and uh, this one this yeah and I will create mark seam for this one as well okay so similar thing will be done over here as well and now what I'll be doing is I will be actually taking this areas to create the seams and, uh, yeah like this one and one for this areas and select mark seam for them as well and of course this one as well It's a little bit of a tedious process of marking all these seams because but once you get ahead of all these things you can easily create you know stunning without looking your textures uh, awful so this is quite helpful in uh, creating textures as well as marking all these textures so as I have created all these seams and maybe one for this one as well mark seam and yeah so selecting everything let me hit U and let me see the unwrappings pretty cool but uh, yeah I think that one these one are a little bit sufficient so now uh, let me go back to the shading options uh, and create a new shaders for this one create a new materials which will be obviously a wood I will be using a wooden material for this one and for this one let me just click this one and let me just see how the scene is now interacting it's looking rather nice yeah okay so here is it our wooden couch and we didn't have to work too much for this one so let me unhide everything and save this project and now it's time for the you know the couch uh, sorry the cushions so for the cushions I will be also using a very base material which uh, will be a leather can be found over here right there there are 13 leather materials available but for this uh, for this cushions I will be applying this leather little brown whatever it's actually written so just let me this one and yeah it's now implemented now one thing you can see that uh, the mesh was actually a very very best shape uh, it did not have too much of you know uh, any displacement going on but once you apply this material you just forget about everything everything is now done within the materials library you don't have to worry about anything uh, one thing for sure I will be changing this color so I will be mixing it up with uh, with a mix RGB node so the first one will be like this one and the second one the second color will be a little bit of a brown not that kind of a brown uh, you know 
I don't want to get that dark browny shape for that one. Maybe like yeah, something like this one will be capable for this scene. Maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, something like that. That was way too dark. Yeah, so you can see that within a very few minutes where I have created, I have applied uh, materials for the room as well as the couch. Now it's time to create the texture, create the materials for uh, for this countertop table. So I will be shift uh, applying shift H for this one because I will also have to do some sort of a UV editing for this one as well. But I think uh, this UV editing or the UV, you know, unwrapping is is uh, yeah it's quite satisfactory so i would be actually uh, having a little uh, having a lot of tension using this one so i'll just uh, copy this material to this one by shift by holding down shift at first i will select the target object which are to which i want to apply the materials then holding down shift i will be uh, selecting this one because that is the parented you know parented object so hitting Control L will bring out the make links or linking options and I will select materials for this one. So you can see it's now implemented quite quite good. And now for the glass one, so I will again you can also find a lot of glass textures over there. You just have to click on this one. There are lots of options. I will be just clicking, you know, yeah, architectural glass and once it is actually implemented you can see it's now interacting with the scene very well now let me just save this one because my uh, you know sometimes blender using this blender kit add-on sometimes uh, becomes very destructive your computer crashes without any without any signal so frequently saving is a very good option for this one i don't know whether it is my uh, it's my computer or i don't know whether it happens to everyone else or not but I am I uh, I actually think to be uh, this is a little bit of a bug now it's time to add the metallic uh, material for this one so I will be renaming it as a metal and use the metallic value to be point, uh, to be way too high and decrease the roughness to be about 0.1 which is good enough and here we go we have got ourselves a very nice countertop table and for now i will be i can i see that i have actually lost uh, i have actually missed one thing i have missed this uh, floor or the floorboards of the of the house of the room actually so i will be using another material for the for this one go to the edit mode select with this face selection select this uh, this face this base you know the flow goes but I will be using this flow and then by selecting this one click on the sign and I will use go to the wood uh, you know yeah wood texture and then I will find something which is suitable like uh, flow boards. I think this one is yeah this one is looking good so let me just select this one and you can see it's actually interacting good but one thing that I found out that the floorboards is actually a little bit of a dull using the roughness but that is actually the uh, I want my you know the woods to be a little bit bigger so I will be using uh, the rotation to be about 90 degree on the z-axis and I will decrease the scale to be about 0.5 and 0.5 over here as well. I think that shall be 2. No, 0.2 is good enough. Yeah, 0.2 is good enough for the scene. And now it's time to create, increase the you know roughness or increase the shiny value for this one. You can click out of this and you get result like this let me just uh, yeah you get a result like this one you increase the roughness value to be about like this 
but I think that I will be using a little bit of a, a little bit of a color wrap uh, to control a little bit of a roughness in this in this floorboard so there will be a converter color ramp and let me just drag this thing a little bit and drag the white slider something goes on like this one and we get a nice little floorboards just increase this one a little bit yeah okay so yeah something like that so now that my room as well as this couch and the table has been created and now it's time to add some material to this uh, to this cabinet so before doing that I will be UV editing this one you can see that the UV masking is not good enough for this one for this countertop table so let me just hide everything other than this one so I will again use some uh, seams to create let me just go to the edge selection and I will create some seams right right in these meshes so yeah and uh, control E to mark seam similar thing will be done over here as well and uh, yeah like this so control E to mark seam and then I will be marking the seams to be something around like all this way and uh, let me just select this one and select these edges so select this edge yeah so mark seam will be another thing so let me just go ahead and hit you to unwrap them and let's see how this is actually interacting so now if i'm going to although it's not looking too good let me just have a look how will this be interacted so i will be again applying the same material to this one as well so just like this control l and apply the materials and yeah it's it's quite satisfactory for this thing because architecture rendering does not need too much of a you know uv mapping and unwrapping unless you are not getting a proper result so i'll save this one and it's time to apply materials for the television so this for this television i won't be actually using any blender kit uh, at all so it will be a very simple you know a very simple material so I'll be using first there will be two types of materials the first one will be the roughness and for this one let me just go ahead the color shall be pure black until like this one and for the roughness I will be using a, a texture that shall be a noise texture so plugging the factor value to the roughness of this uh, of this uh, of this material and then i will increase the scale value to about 500 and use the same vector point and use the same noise texture as uh, the vector or the normal map so let me just i will just uh, plug this color in output to the input of the normal map and then i will plug this normal to the normal value of this one and you can see that we have got a nice little a nice you know noise going around my mesh the one problem is that it, the strength is way too much so i will decrease the strength to about 0.1 which is good enough and yeah it's actually interesting the same with, with much ease 
and for the screen i will be using another texture or another materials and this one i will be renaming as screen and for this uh, i will select with the face selection i will select this face this face and click on the screen and then hit aside for this one also i will be using a little bit of a base uh, the base will be something like this and the roughness shall be around 0.2 so that a little bit of a you know shiny material is going around this just like a tv does so now that uh, near about all these uh, you know furnitures have been created with the materials and now it's time to uh, create some other simple materials at first and then I will pay attention to this uh, flower vase so now it's time to create this one uh, the pins as well as these rods uh, as well as this you know the slides or the pins will be having the same material as this one so the metallic will be the same materials for all these three things and for this one this glass will be actually i will be selecting the glass and then this glass and hit ctrl l and then apply materials so that we have got a glassy you know glassy pattern going around and for this one for the base i will be selecting this one and then i will select this uh, roughness of the tv and then i will select link the materials now so far so good it's now time to apply some text apply some materials for this photo frames now at first i will be applying you know let me just apply the for the textures or materials for this the glasses so for this glass i will be again using uh, basic glass uh, basic glass shader for this uh, let me just go. yeah this will basic glass and I will be applying all these two different glasses and we will follow the same link for this one to again apply the materials and I will hide this one for time being and now it's time to apply the materials to all these you know on these photo frames so there will be wooden texture applied but before applying the texture materials let me just uh, select everyone and UV unwrap them quick unwrapping of the UVs and for this one as well new to unwrap yeah now it's time to apply the materials so for this one I will be using again a wood structure again oh, this is some sort of a work I am actually not finding this screencast piece sometimes it's being disabled anyways I will be using this one so now you can see it's actually uh, implementing to the scene rather nice and then I will follow copy uh, select these two frames and then select this one and then hit ctrl L to apply the materials to all these two all these three you know photo frames now it's time to create some another material for this one so let me just select this one this face and clicking on new I will assign a new a new you know materials for this one and it will be actually my uh, my image texture which uh, I have taken a sh which I have found in from Pinterest as well as taken from my own you know mobile so going to the desktop going to the living room this one I will be selecting for the center image and yeah it's actually interacting nice let me just scale this one a little bit uh, i think it's uh, yeah that's okay for this one, for the scene and for this one i will be again using another texture or another materials better to say a new materials click on assign and for this one i will be using an image texture which has been taken by my, by my camera for this one i will be using this little flower 
which is actually not looking according to the scale so I will be increasing the rotation of the Y, y to be around like this and yeah that's it save this one and for this one for this image I will be selecting another material click on assign and another image texture for for this little photo photo frame Again, I need a little bit of a scaling for for this little flower, something like this. I can also drag them like this one. So this one is pretty much finished, and now it's time to apply some texture over here as well. So I will be applying a new material for this one. And I will apply another texture which shall be an image texture as well just go ahead and click on image So I will be if uh, I'll be using this one, which is looking rather nice. Yeah, this one for this image, and you can see that it's uh, this is also not according to scale. So I will be just uh, let me position this, rotate it along the Z axis to be about 90 degrees, and then scale it down bit about 1.2 as well as over here 1.2 yeah and I will now drag it a little bit I think one will be sufficient let me just reposition that yeah like this and for the roughness I'll be using point 141 or like the 0.15 would be good so uh, but it's okay with this set. so now that pretty much everything is now clear made now it's time for my curtains to be created the base color of the curtain shall be a little bit of a brown like this and the subsurface will be something around 0.2 the subsurface color will also be a little bit like this with a little bit of a you know, intensity like this one and for the roughness also i will be using the same noise texture scaled all the way up to 500 input the factor to the roughness and then i will be using a vector a normal map for this one select this to the color and then Plug in the normal to the normal of this one and straight and put the straight to be about point 0.1 and I will also copy this the same material for this one, this one as well so now that uh, pretty much my room has been finished only these lights are now to the left let me select this one the tilt key to go into the view selected Yeah. and now what I'll be doing I will be again using two different materials for this one the first material will be let me just rename this as roughness or the base and this one will be the base color will be just like pure black like this one and the roughness shall be like this and now I will be using another material for for you know Let me just select this one to 
select this one and hit control plus to select all of them all of them and click on this new and assign this one but that shall be an emission shield sorry about that yeah that shall be an emission shader of course so use notes shader for this for this purpose and select the strain value to about 10 now hitting sign I can see that the ceiling lights are now implemented with ease so far so good and now it's time to manually uh, at first uh, create the materials for the bar for the vase and then I will apply two different textures manually to create these plants so for the face i will be going to this uh, ceramic options let me just save this one real quick save and i will select this one this green ceramic you know materials for for this for this nice little jar and now what i will be doing is I will be changing the color a little bit the first color is actually given a darker green I will be just uh, take this value to be something like this and the second one will also be a lighter color so I don't want my vase to be or the vase to be too dark for this scene and I will select this one as well as this one to be applied the same materials each and every one of them and now everything is finished now it's time to apply the texture for the branches now for the branches I will be let me just select this branch everything is now selected I will be using a material which shall be something like this and for the color or the, for the base color I'll be using an image texture uh, yeah and the image texture shall be the one I have downloaded from game textures which is very very helpful you can find various royalty free images uh, for this textures to be applied See that it's not actually updating this one. So it seems to be the problem. Let me just select everyone. And now I will be controlling the color a little bit. So uh, let me just first save this project. So mix RGB, yeah, something like that. And I will be mixing this color to that of a you know dark uh, brownish like one to make it some sort of a dead leaf. Yo. Know. So I'll be following this and this branches and then I will select this branch and hit ctrl L to apply the materials and once I did that you can see that all of these materials are actually using the same channels 
so far so good and now is finally i will be applying the textures for uh, i will be applying a material for this you know this little leaf so for this leaf let me just go back to the solid view i will be at first applying you know uh, it's been uv unwrapped let me just go ahead uh, yes it's uv unwrapped and now i will go to the texture paint options in order to paint some sort of a texture in it so texture paint and i will go ahead and select as you can see it's actually purple because there is no texture applied so i will go ahead and add a base color and rename this as a leaf texture and select ok so now that the leaf texture is actually applied uh, let me just select this one leaf texture yeah and now you can see it's actually been scaled now what I actually did over here is I will I dragged over there let me just get rid of this one so that it's may find it easy just go I have to go down to on this texture panel and click on new texture and just rename it as leaf and then go into the texture panel brush and the leaf is actually selected I will go ahead and open an image texture that I have actually downloaded for this one I will be using this leaf texture so open image as you can see this image has been opened and I will again go back over there and for the mapping it's actually stencil if it's not stencil just go ahead and there are lots of options just go ahead and click on stencil and click on image aspect and now for the angle I have rotated on the 90 degree and you just have to cl uh, left click and drag to paint this one over over your UV you know islands and you don't have to worry about all these uh, white images that is actually now popping out once you are actually painting because these will not be affected to to your mesh because these are actually outside the your uv uv island so this will not get affected with your whiteness as you can see it's actually looking rather better so it's very important to see as to save your image so save as i will be saving this on the same folder that from where i have taken this the texture so this one I will be saving this as a leaf texture. So select on this and I will save this as image. So very cool, it's now the texture has been saved and once I go to the shading panel, you will be able to see that my image is already been, been loaded. So save my project and now it's time to use some more commands over this as well. Let me just translate everything. So let me just introduce, I will now duplicate this image. And for the second one, let me just get rid of this two. And for this one, I will be selecting non-color data. And I will be using a I will be plugging this one to the roughness of the of my notes as you can see there is a little bit of a roughness there which is going on which is rather good and I will also take this one uh, take the same image and use as a normal map and use this normal or connect this normal to the normal of my shader and decrease the strength to about 0.12 15 is actually good enough so far so good so now that my image has been already loaded once i go inside this room i will find out that let me just go ahead and this one. i will find out that yeah the lips are now actually loaded on the screen because they are actually instances of the, of those objects so now let me go back to the layout and you can see that pretty much my every texture is now applied and it's only now I have only left with the lightings of this scene and once I get a hold of these lightings the entire scene will be done. 
So let me start with the ceiling lights at first. So yeah, I will uh, select this room and then uh, going to the face selection. I will try to do this process as quickly as possible. Let me just uh, select this one. If hit Shift S and then select cursor to select it. And then now I will add some lights, which uh, the first one shall be the area lamp. And let me now just scale it according to to the gap right about there. And uh, let me grab this one, uh, grab this to X axis, somewhere place like this. Okay. And let me just scale this, uh, which shall match the portion, you know, the gap right about uh, from this area to this area let me just scale this up so scaling and the scale shall be on the y-axis so scale it according to the gap and uh, let me just bring it up a little bit so that it just merely touches the ceiling upward so just right there now in order to have a look at the scene let me just uh, switch on to the rendered view so for the first time I am hitting the rendered view and uh, yeah it's actually so far so good and now what i will be doing i will at first tweak the settings of this light and then i will duplicate this light to all these four corners so going down to this uh, little bulb which is uh, you know the lights object data it's an area lamp of course i will uh, change the color to uh, from pure white to be a little bit of a yellowish tint something like uh, like this yeah and I will increase the strength from 10 watt to 50 watt. So just giving the value of 50 will actually turn up this one. And right there in the shadow options, there is a uh, there is an option called contact shadow. I will just uh, enable this one and increase the distance from 0.2 meter to be about two meters. So yeah. So this is actually uh, it's very simple setup now. Now I will be duplicating this very lamp and I will bring it right in there. So let me just bring it at the place, at my desired place. Now let me save this one first. And then what I will be doing, I will be uh, duplicating these two lights. By selecting these two lights, I will be duplicating this and then I will rotate them on the Z axis to be about 90 degrees so that it's actually on all the four corners now it's actually mismatched with the with the alignment of the room so I will manually correct it so grab it on the y-axis bring it right bar there and I will scale it down also to the y-axis a little bit and then grab it and move it forward to the, at this place and similar thing will be done over here as well so grab them, uh, grab the light on the y-axis, and then a little bit of a scaling down on the y-axis to, you know, to match the scene. So now the ceiling lights have been implemented. Now it's time to add some spotlight right on, you know, just below this, uh, this ceiling lights. So I will quickly select to solid view, and by selecting this one, I will hit. Then uh, tab to go to the edit mode. Let me just go. Let me just yeah. And going to the vertex selection, I will select this vertex and quickly snap my cursor to this particular area. And I will now add a spot lamp. Now, in order to view the spot lamp, what I will be doing, I will again go to the rendered tab, and uh, I can see that the spot lamp is not interacting too much. So I will just increase this, uh, the strength to be about 50 watt and also I will ch change the color to be a little bit of a yellow, yellowish tint and uh, the radius or the size actually the size shall be increased a little bit of an increasing of the size uh, maybe maybe like this one 87.8 degree or maybe 90 degree will be good enough for the same. yeah so I'll be changing uh, I have changed the you know the size of the of the uh, of the spot lamp or the size of the uh, shape or the cone to be about 90 degree and then i'll again click on this contact shadow and i will leave the settings as default so till now everything is actually working fine now what i will be doing i will be duplicating this very spot lamp and 
follow them just place them under each of these ceiling lamp so quickly let me just duplicate it and grab it on the x-axis and just bring it right about there just a very bit uh, just a very roughly you know movement and finally another over here as well so duplicate grab it on this x-axis so I will again duplicate it to grab it on the x axis and bring it right about there. So having done these things I uh, I can see that I have also uh, have to apply all this lamp over here. So what I will be doing I will be selecting all these spot lamp and then I will duplicate them and send them. Let, let me just duplicate this one and let me just uh, move it on the y axis so that it just so let me just save this one and i will quickly go back to solid view now everything is now implemented now only one lamp will be left which shall be i will be duplicating this very lamp just duplicate this one and by selecting this you know glass the uh, the the curves i'll go to edit mode and quickly select cursor to select it so that it's now just lying uh, underneath that that curves or the glass you know the cylindrical pattern that I've created and now I will duplicate uh, I'll send this one right on the 3d cursor so shift S, and then I will select selection to cursor and now everything is all the lights is actually now implemented and yeah I'm quite much satisfied with the result so let me just save this one but i can see that the room is still dark or dull actually this is uh, a little bit of a setup is needed in ev so i will have to add some light probes which will be the indirect lighting as well as a cube map of lighting so let me just select you know the room right now and for this process i will be needing uh, the wireframe selection so now right now i'll be selecting uh, snapping my cursor to select it and quickly add a light probe which shall be at first there will be a, an irradiance volume quickly match it with that of my uh, with that of my scene for the room now it's very very important to scale it accordingly to the size of uh, you know the room otherwise otherwise the scene can get a little bit of a messy I hope that uh, this kind of problem will not happen because uh, this time will not happen because I uh, it's actually my fourth time that I'm actually recording this one. I got a lot of problems while doing this stuff. Sometimes I'm also uh, starting to learn all these uh, you know new EV features, which is awesome by the way. But sometimes it gets uh, really messy. So if you are new at uh, if you're a new user you will find it a, a little bit difficult to you know grab all the commands as well as uh, you know uh, other features of the EV so just touching the you know the wall of the room I have set my irradiance volume now it's on the x-axis now I'll be matching on the y-axis as well so scale on the y-axis and just stir and just touch this outer you know outer wall or match the outer wall of this room and yeah that's it so that's my irradiance volume and I will again I will also add a reflection cube map and just bring it upward a little bit and then what I'll be doing I'll again match this reflection cube map with that of the room This reflection cube map will actually affect the reflection edges and all the uh, all this reflection is actually uh, is actually happening on in this glass all these glass panels so let me just go back to solid view and so far so good now I will actually enable I will actually play with the settings of some of the uh, important EV you know features so going down to this you know uh, what's the what's this option called context or, or render settings I will now enable ambient occlusion 
and then I will again uh, you know enable skin space reflection and also enable refraction as well and that's that's it for the settings and now I will have to manually select this these glasses go into its uh, you know materials properties and then enable skin space reflection for everyone uh, for every object now as these are all the instances uh, these these glass panels are actually taking the instances of this one so enabling just one will actually uh, will actually enable the these options for every other instances of the material that has been used now for this glass panel I will again use screen space refraction and uh, let me just check yeah this one is, uh, has also been applied and another thing I will also enable screen space reflection, uh, refraction for this one because this is a metallic you know thing going on over there as well. So having done these things uh, I will go over to my renders tab and then I will go to this indirect lighting and select bake indirect lighting and once it is baked then I will be uh, looking at my perspective and I will check whether there is any kind of modifications needed or not. So as you can see it's actually taking a little bit of a time and uh, actually I forgot to enable this one shadows because uh, you can also play with the shadows but let me give it a try and let me see uh, whether the scene is actually interacting with uh, whether the scene is actually interacting good or not. So let me just go uh, hit Z and select render view and you can look at that the lighting is actually much developed yeah the lighting is much there is a little bit of a tweaking actually needed over here as here but other than that everything is looking awesome everything is looking fine just fine so so what tweakings shall be done let me just go back to the solid view and let's enable the shadows and I will be increasing the cube size to be about 1024 and click on high bit depth so as to create a more realistic you know realistic type of uh, what you can say uh, realistic type of shadows so now let me just go ahead and hit the render button and you can see that scene is actually looking quite nice now I'll be using an HDR to actually have a little bit of more command of the lighting or the outer lighting. So let me just go to this uh, shading option and just select this solid view. And over here instead of object I'll be selecting world. I'll be actually inputting a texture which shall be an uh, you know environment texture and plug the color output of this environment texture to the color input of the background and then I will select uh, you know a texture that I want this is the textures HDRI textures I'm just selecting this one so let me just yeah I'll be selecting this uh, 8k version CG Canyon and uh, let me have a look at this one Just save this one quickly and yeah right from the inside is actually looking quite nice a little bit of a you know scaling and uh, aligning of this texture is needed so let me just go inside this room and let me let me just uh, bring on the texture coordinate and select some of the manual you know place where I think light can be interacted good enough just to view this and I will have to position the camera to be more like uh, yeah like this one what was that Shall we texture coordinate? Yeah, like this one. 
Let me just bring it down a little bit. Maybe something like this. And yeah, so far so good. It's now, it's now having a good, uh, you know, sense. Just give it a little bit of a darker shade. Like this one, three. And I will again bake this indirect lighting. Let me just go to go back to the layout uh, on uh, actually the default layout and I will select back indirect lighting and let me see how it's actually interacting with the scene if uh, everything goes on then this pretty much closes or this pretty much finishes the this pretty much finishes the tutorial so the video let me check this one the render tab and look at that we have got a nice little control of the of the outer on the outward lights and it's actually looking it's actually looking rather nice but a little bit of a tweaking is needed over the ceiling because as you can see the light is actually bleeding from this wall so what I can do is I will go back to this uh, you know this reflection cube map and with this reflection cube map enabled, let me scale it down on the z-axis a little bit. Or uh, uh, let me just scale it up a little bit. Scale it up a little bit like this way. And just make this light once again. And I'll have to wait a little bit here. As you can see that it's now taking a little bit of time to make all this indirect lighting because there are lots of light going on in the scene and once it gets loaded let me go to the render tab and look at that i can still see there is a little bit of a light bleeding i think i have to scale down you know the cube map a little bit not to elongate or not to scale it up i'll have to scale it down a little bit so in order to let me just go back and hit and scale it down on the z-axis something less like there scale it down on the x-axis something less like there and bake this once again And let me have a look after it's baked how it's actually interacting with the scene I think I had done a little bit of a mistake again let me go back to the render view and uh, yeah I did a terrible mistake right now I actually put this this radiance volume right in there I had to put it right about you know there the upward ceiling so let me scale it up on the z-axis a little bit and just merely touch it which actually mainly touches this the support ceiling and pick this once again and I hope that this time it will be actually resolved the problem will be resolved but let's see what happens this time Yeah, that pretty much solved the issue with the you know the upward ceiling but there is a still a light bleeding on these walls so I have to scale it up on the X and Y axis as well as you can see it's just merely touches touches these walls so I will be just putting it right about there and uh, yes definitely it needs a little bit of uh, elongation on the X axis bring it and just touch these walls merely touching these walls and then again I will be baking this light because once you do a little bit of a change you have to bake these indirect lightings but I think this one is pretty pretty much uh, you know it's way too faster than that than it was in the cycles because I have used cycles in my uh, you know uh, 
lot of times and the you know setting up all the lights and doing things over and over again can be really frustrating in cycles but as you can see it's taking a little bit of a time in EV and yeah this pretty much solves the issue and we have got a nice little house there is a still a little bit of a light bleeding in there it's because of the fact that the light over here is now interacting with the with the reflection of this one so what i will be doing let me just go to the this panel and let me see if i can tweak some other settings the ambient occlusion if i'm increasing this one with the ambient occlusion as you can see it's actually getting a lot better so setting the distance of the ambient occlusion to be about two meters can solve your issue right away so let me just give it a render and let us see whether uh, the scene is actually interacting good or not so hitting f12 and yeah we have now finished our scene there so this pretty much ends their video i hope you like this one i hope you like this series and uh, i will be now uploading a more i'm now uploading tutorials on some more complex you know environment uh, architectural environment like this one but if you like this concept uh, hit like button and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the notification bell if you have any kind of compliments to share with me you are most welcome you can uh, you know rain comments in the comment section and uh, it will be very very much help uh, i will be very very much you know happy to give you some uh, to get some compliments from you people so that's it for today guys uh, i hope you enjoyed it so i'll uh, see you in the next video